Hello, Internet. I'm the Disney Brain, and in my never-ending quest to encourage discourse and critical thinking, I came up with an idea. An idea that will ideally challenge all of us. And so, the Ranger rewrite was born. Here's the short of it, guys. It really is both too easy, and at this point, a step removed from straight-up bullying, to keep harping about the seasons we already think aren't great. So instead, I wanted to create what could become a series of videos discussing the shortcomings in some of the best seasons. Not to be negative, but to look at seasons we maybe take for granted as good and take our signature closer look to see how they maybe could have been even better. But this won't just be me tossing script revisions at you guys. I see this as a collaborative thought exercise. It's not just about my ideas, it's primarily about sharing, exchanging, and respectfully challenging your ideas and those of your fellow viewer in the comments below. In short, it's time for all of us to take that signature closer look. And what better place is there to start than the one season that will challenge me the most? I don't even need to remind most of you just how close to my heart this particular season is. But again, I think the value of viewing things you love in a critical lens speaks for itself. So, with all that said, let's jump right in. The first thing to discuss here is the concept of Lost Galaxy. As some of us know, Lost Galaxy wasn't based on a space-themed Sentai. In fact, the somewhat recent Q-Ranger was, surprisingly, Sentai's first attempt at such a story. Rather, Ginja Man was nature-based, so Lost Galaxy was nearly a complete conceptual overhaul, meant to capitalize on In Space successfully introducing the franchise to the final frontier. And why not? I've always been adamant about my stance that Rangers always felt more at home as a space opera, given the fact that the Ranger Patriarch is an alien himself who fights against fellow otherworldly villains. So making what really amounts to a sequel to In Space, a point made stronger given how Crone completes her arc in this season, always made perfect sense to me. But. One thing that didn't make any sense to pretty much everyone is the title. The joke's been made too many times to count, but really, the solution was pretty obvious. While the season took some aesthetic inspiration from Starship Troopers, their defining story element should have taken a cue from Star Trek Voyager. For those unfamiliar with one of the more underrated Trek entries, the whole point is that Captain Janeway's crew actually does get lost. So most of the show revolves around getting back to Earth while trying to uncover ways to potentially speed up the journey. And Lost Galaxy proper had a great shot at doing just that, what with the Miranoi portal being a huge plot device in the season opener. A portal that, for whatever reason, worked both individually and for an entire ship. And also closed arbitrarily because... I guess a planet turning to stone wasn't enough tension? I still consider it arguably the best season premiere, but no Ranger season is short on question marks, as we all know. In any case, I think Terra Venture getting lost makes sense for more reasons than just making the title much less awkward. The journey that this station is attempting has never been done before, not even close, and we have no idea how many Terra Ventures they burn through to make this final station. Just the station alone should be riddled with problem areas, to say nothing of the unknowns the Great Beyond presents that this crew and its passengers have no way to account for. So, show them plotting out their perfect coordinates, show them monitoring the status of their engines, show them going over their rations to ensure everyone can be properly fed, and then some, in the time it'll take to get to the new world. Then, show all of those plans washed away when a random Terran space pulls them into an unknown more unknown than the unknown they planned for. Now, every calculation, every detail of every plan ever made over however many years it took to make this all possible has to be redone immediately. Now, all that sounds pretty cold and joyless, but it won't always be, as we'll soon discuss. All of this would naturally change a lot about how the plot goes down post stowaway, but I'd rather not turn this into a complete fanfiction-esque rewrite of the entire plot and focus more on the areas that could stand to be improved, which also means tidying up the crevice of convenience. Other acceptable titles include Deus Ex Earthquake and the literal plot hole. Now for this one, we will have to adjust some story elements to have things line up properly. Firstly, instead of Mike falling into any crevice, he gets left behind when Terra Venture gets lost. And now, in addition to the colony being lost, Leo and anyone else close to Mike has to find a way to track him down. So then in comes Magna Defender, who suffers in exactly the same way, except now we're going to take a page from the Time Force playbook. The backstory behind Frax and Rancic adds on to the Time Force narrative about hate, revenge, and the cyclical nature of both. So, in this case, Mike, being the type to always jump in and help, 
plays the Frax role and decides to help Nurse Magna Defender back to health after some arbitrary amount of time post Sika death. Magna Defender is mostly alright after the fact, but figures he can become even more powerful if he steals Mike's essence and uses his added boost in output to enact his revenge. This way, there is a bit more weight on the initial guilt of MD, because he was able to justify turning on someone who was kind to him just for a chance to slay Scorpius, and it's because he's not naturally an evildoer that we eventually see him struggle to maintain that facade. He wants to push people away, he wants to harden his heart, and he wants to become the type of person capable of coldly avenging his son. But Mike's essence continually keeps him from going all the way until Redemption Day happens more or less as is. But even larger than any singular plot point or any one character is how the show might flow as a complete story. This is where I could see Lost Galaxy using its now very much lost nature in two specific ways. The first would be to establish not just the direness of their predicament, but to build on what being light years away from home means to the people. As a general character point, this was one of the few things missing with the Galaxy team. They were an incredible Ranger family, felt like real people, acted like real people, and sold a lot of fans despite them being the first completely new team since the franchise began. However, none of them go into any real depth about what they sacrificed, who they left behind to go on this journey. We get that from Maya to an extent, but everyone had to leave their home. Maybe Kai's whole thing was getting out of a bad situation at home by pouring more of himself into his work, and then, when the chance of a lifetime arrived, he, presumably, had no regrets about leaving his old life behind. And Leo's backstory is probably one of unbridled optimism in the face of constant failure and being unfairly compared to his perfect brother. So why not stow away, if only to finally prove that you too can achieve what seems to come so easily for him? This would also add another layer to Destined for Greatness, since we now have more context into why Leo would feel so unworthy of his power in spite of training hard, learning from his gaffes, and being an all-around great leader to that point. Because at the end of the day, none of that means as much to him as finally being on an equal playing field as Mike. It's fairly Carter-esque in that way, where the man he's also looking to match always feels so far in front, if only in his mind, and that pushes him to train that much harder than anyone else, and the results speak for themselves. Worth noting is that a lot of these points might be very loosely implied, especially so if you're like me and have a younger or older brother and have seen this play out firsthand. But I personally think that when done right, there is a sizable benefit to the addition of context. It can be something as subtle as starting Leo off as the guy who does poorly in college, wants to get away from it all on a whim, can't, sneaks in, and there's your plot. And then, Mike would naturally reprimand his carelessness on multiple fronts before he's thought lost for a long time. All the while, Leo proves that he actually can stand on his own two feet. So that's the first big idea here, utilizing the Lost in Space premise to really dig into how everyone ended up here, as well as what it means that they are here. And Damon being the chill one is perfect for a season-long joke of him just being along for the ride. Now. The second big idea is the actual process of exploring new venues and different planets. Tie that into TerraVenture needing supplies, rations, fuel, a better warp engine to cut the time off their trip. Pick your plot driver, simple as that. Then we can use that as a good enough way to explore more of the Rangerverse just as In Space started. That'll also give a more defined purpose for Maya, who is essentially the spiritual guide for all things space. I like how Maya is handled because she's the first alien the rangers meet, and it's immediately this more naturalistic side of space that contrasts with the more tech-centric vibe of TerraVenture. It proves early that space is usually a combination of both, or at the very least, not so easily defined as one or the other. Just like how the Galactic Beasts at any one point are either fully sentient creatures or advanced transforming machines. It's a nice detail. Now, this would run the risk of Maya explaining away too much of the plot, so instead of her just knowing everything, she could simply know enough so that TerraVenture isn't always flying blindly through space. And this initial bout of travel would all culminate with TerraVenture receiving a distress call from Magna Defender's homeworld, setting that arc into motion, a homeworld that will actually have a name this time because there is really no good reason to not have that. All this while MD is still being nursed back to health and helps Mike with the signal because the Rangers are on Terra Venture, who he, at some point, figured out are in opposition with Scorpius and the rest rights itself. 
The biggest takeaway from this is for the season to use the space, and in doing so, feel a little less claustrophobic with how they tell certain stories and how new powers are obtained. As such, important MacGuffins like the Trans Daggers or the Lights of Orion won't just magically appear on the colony one fine evening, they'll be sitting on some random planet along the way, as should be the case for every noteworthy power-up. And while we're talking about planets, you know what really wasn't very noteworthy but really should have been? Rashon also known as the place where Kendrix gave her life to save everyone else's. Now, granted, Rashon not being a big deal doesn't derail the emotional impact, but even still, why not use KO-35? Power of Pink is already part two of the In Space crossover, and we already have a reason to care about what happens to this particular planet. And since KO-35 would also be a bit more on the advanced side, perhaps build up that sacrifice even more by having Kendrix take to the people thereof more than the average Galaxy Ranger. Ideally, by way of Cassie. Kind of like how Andros learns more about Earth by way of Ashley, except without the need for a romance after the fact. This kills two birds with one stone, because now you also have a more established reason for Cassie wanting to take Kendrix's place. This is as good a lead up as anything to now discussing the original Miss Morgan. For the few uninitiated among you, Kendrix is my favorite Power Ranger of all time, followed closely by the man himself. So, from my perspective, there is really not much that needs to be changed. Although, Double Duty as an episode does come with the problem of why would this be a thing inside a space station, so not much would be lost if most of that concept went away. Instead, I'd hone in on her trademark ability to connect with anyone and everyone. This mixed in with her genuine love of discovery would put her in a position where being something of an ambassador for the human race would feel all too natural. For those in the know, Basically, think of how Amy Adams' character was utilized in Arrival, except take that idea and apply it to every new planet the colony discovers, rather than being discovered themselves. Now, this would challenge her too, because not all creatures can be reached, and that's usually not the fault of the one reaching out. That would make for a pretty great focus episode, with the take-home message being, reaching out doesn't always work. But, it's always worth it. Because if she wasn't already doing that, then she wouldn't be the glue holding the season together in the first place, and I think it's valuable on both a character level and a viewer level to realize that failing once does not negate all the times you succeeded. As far as large scale adjustments go, there is one more idea I'd like to bring up, the Battleizer. Now I love most things about it, but there's just no escaping the fact that Leo acquiring the power, while not being the real focus of that episode, feels off. And I kind of whined about it incessantly when the same thing happened to Sarah, so fair is fair. Changing this would also necessarily involve changing several other plot points, based on how I'd go about it. First things first, Leo earns the upgrade after finally absolving himself of all his self-doubt once the Magna Defender arc ends and Mike returns. And then, once Crone comes into the picture, instead of earning armor for Leo, this is where the Galaxy Book comes in. And, Corone earns the book from her former enemy by going through the same motions and ridding herself of Astronomer forever. And since they're already lost in this version, the book will instead be used to get them unlost. But the problem is, there are some spells in there that they can't quite translate. But, the warrior tells them of the book Guardian, who can read the inscriptions with ease. This might change how said Guardian is introduced and how Kai would fit into that particular episode, but that's pretty easy to tie into Captain Mutiny, Hexuba, and everything else from the final bits leading up to Journey's End. Speaking of which, there is really nothing I would change about Journey's End. It functions pretty much exactly as it needs to, especially thematically. Trakina turns into a bloodthirsty, sacrificial psychopath because she responded to tragedy in the exact opposite way as the Rangers did. Now, I know that at least a few of you would be in favor of not bringing back Kendrix, and I can totally see that working for this story. After all, her parting words were, I'll always be here. And, so long as the team stays together and stays strong after the fact, which they did, then her influence really is always there. But, all that having been said, I just see her resurrection as too perfectly symbolic of her victorious battle off-screen. It's just one of those things that's considerably more important than any episode, or any show, period. So regardless of how easy it might seem in the context of Lost Galaxy, the larger context of why Kendrick's needed to sacrifice herself at all just means so, so much more to me. And personally, 
I wouldn't have the journey end any other way. And those are some of my ideas on how I would have reworked several things for my favorite season ever. And now, I want to know your ideas for how you might have improved the season, whether you loved it, couldn't stand it, or fall somewhere in the middle. And if you are part of the Love It To Death crowd, just like me, try to understand where some of everyone else's critiques are coming from. Not to make you love it less, I critique this show for several minutes now and I still love it, but to make you think more, think differently, and maybe even discover something you hadn't considered before. And if you're on the complete other side of that fence, well, you know, just don't be a dick, I guess. And if you guys would like to see more videos like this for any other fan favorite seasons, perhaps an RPM or a Time Force video, just let me know. And until then, thanks for watching and discussing.